Good morning, afternoon, or evening. This is Bryn with Train by Tex, and we are going to get started here with another video in our PicoScope series for beginning users. In this video, we're going to show you how to save your startup settings. That way, every time you open the Pico application, it's going to automatically open with the settings that you prefer. The other thing we're going to share with you is some of the preferred settings that most of our PicoScope friends are using. Uh, just to give you kind of an idea of where maybe a baseline, a starting point for yourself, we're going to encourage you to sway it back and forth from some of the settings that we are using just so that you can get a feel for what works best for you. The next thing we're going to show you is how to save settings for specific tests. Um, an example might be relative compression testing. You have specific settings for that test and we're going to show you how to save those settings so that anytime you want to do relative compression testing you would just simply open up the application uh, and it would start up right away with the uh, relative compression testing settings. Pretty neat deal there. Eric Ziegler and Scott Schotten during the 2017 CAN conference shared that with a group of us and uh, we thought that was a pretty neat tip so we're going to share that with you as well. So let's get started. We're going to start up here at the time collection time or the time base. Now, with PicoScopes, typically you're going to have a lot of time on this, the laptop. And that's kind of one benefit to PicoScope is it, it makes it easier. You know, you don't have to necessarily change from one uh, time base to another as often as you would on maybe another scope product. Um, you could just put a lot of time on it and then you would zoom in. After you stopped and saved that capture, then you could manipulate and zoom in on the capture to get, you know, a certain spot for you to analyze uh, the trace. Uh, again, comparing to other products like Snap-on, you couldn't do that because of the limitations of the tool. With Snap-on, you have to have less time on the screen, and the way their product works is you just fill a bunch of the buffers with pages, and then you'd zoom out on all of those pages after you stop the capture, of course, and then, you know, focus on the area of that, all of those pages or the buffered content that you want to zoom back in on, and then you zoom back in on it. So, uh, definitely just different. Uh, each product's different. Um, I I like the Pico scope because it's like taking one step away and it makes it uh, the learning curve for a lot of beginners in my opinion is, is is less so because you can just have a lot of time on the screen you don't have to again remember exactly what's best uh, sweep speed for what captures I personally like 500 milliseconds per division uh, obviously there's 10 divisions here so 500 milliseconds times 10 is 5 seconds total sweep speed. The range that I've seen amongst friends of mine that are using PicoScopes is uh, typically between 100 milliseconds per division to 1 second per division, which of course 100 milliseconds uh, would be 1 second sweep speed and 1 second per division of course would be a 10 second sweep speed. That's what we're seeing for the most part. The sample rates next here and what I use is about anywhere from 1 to 5 most of the time. I start off with my preferred starting settings at 2 million samples per division and that's kind of what we're seeing anywhere from 1 to 5 for most PicoScope users for most captures. Um, again we talked about sample rate earlier. Uh, it does make a difference you know with too much sample rate on some slow automotive traces then you could be looking at uh, you know ex some excessive noise on the capture that might limit your ability to analyze it properly without filtering. Uh, if there's not enough samples, sample rate on super high speed uh, automotive signals, then you're going to lose some of the detail that you might need to diagnose that. So um, again, one to five is what I've heard most of my friends are using. I start off at two million samples per second. Uh, we would just encourage you with all of this is to kind of use this as a baseline and, and you know, kind of play with it and see what works best for you. Of course, it does change depending on what capture you're uh, acquiring. So that's uh, pretty much it for that portion. Now we move on to our channel settings. I start off each channel, of course you have four here, A, B, C, and D. I start off each channel into, with a times one probe. The, the measurement values that I choose are pretty simple. It's just plus or minus 20. And the reason I do that is because, it, you know, most automotive circuits are you know, system voltage, you know, so 12 to 15 volts or whatever, depending on whether the car is idle, you know, key on engine off or whether the car is key on engine running. So, you know, I think 20 volts kind of gets you covered. And even if it is a 5 volt reference circuit, uh, 20 volts is fine to start with and you can adjust from there. So that's kind of my reasoning behind it. Of course, you guys can choose uh, whatever you think suits your needs, but that's kind of where I've always started them. And that's it. Um, that's kind of pretty much all I do with my preferred startup settings. So what you would do from there is, of course, set that stuff up first and then go into 
File up at the top left, and then go to Startup Settings, Save User Default Settings. All right, so that's it. I'm going to close this down. And as you can see, uh, we've closed it down. The application's not running. And we're just going to double click the application and start it up again. And you can see here, we've, of course, got our prompt for you know, the warning suggesting that there's no device found, whether or not we want to go into demo mode. We click yes, of course, because we're not attached to a scope at this point. But we're just trying to show you that now that we've saved our startup settings, we've closed the application and opened it again, it should start up with the settings that you've saved. As you can see here, uh, it has. We have our 5 million or milliseconds per division, our 2 million samples, and 20 volts plus or minus on every channel. So that's that part. So the next thing we're going to show you is how to save startup settings for specific tests. You know? So the previous ones were just startup settings for general use. But what we're going to show you now, again, some anything specific that you're going to do frequently, and you don't want to you know, have to change your settings uh, for this test uh, if you don't have to, and that's what this is about. So uh, our example is going to be relative compression tests. So we're going to set our scope up for how we would for performing a relative compression test, and then we can save it uh, so that if we need to perform that test, we can just start the scope software, and it will automatically have those settings that you would normally use for that test. So with that, we'll get started. So with relative compression tests, as far as the amount of collection time, obviously there's going to be specific time needed to make sure that you have at least enough to show all the cylinders. Uh, on the engine, so 720 degrees crankshaft uh, degrees. But I typically like to put even more time on the screen so that I can see that repeated trace, if you will. So several, you know, at least two or three uh, 723, you know, crankshaft r rotations. That way, I can make sure that if I see an anomaly, it's consistent across several of those uh, uh, crankshaft rotations. So, for me, relative compression-wise, I keep the 500 milliseconds per division, as well, you know, which is my normal setting. Really, what we're going to ch change is your probes and your voltage settings. We talked about some of the channel settings before up here, but when it comes to turning on and off channels, I just right-click anywhere on the screen, go to channels, and click uh, any of the ones that you want to turn on and off. Of course, if you're going to be doing something more than relative compression with sync, which is more specifically what we're going to show you today, uh, is being able to sync an ignition event to that relative compression capture so you can see so you can verify when the ignition is taking place, but also verify what cylinders are what in that relative compression capture. Of course, if you want to add more stuff to it, like the cranking vacuum is another thing that I'll generally add because it's super quick and it, it supplies a lot of information. But initially, when you're doing relative compression tests, you're probably just wanting to check a couple things to verify. And then from there, it's easy to add another channel if you want to do cranking vacuum. So for our demonstration purposes, we're just going to do relative compression with sync. And that's obviously going to be two channels. So with most modern cars, you know, most of them, of course, are coil-on plug, and we're getting to the point where two-wire coils are getting fewer and far farther between. So um, it depends on what you're seeing, but for me, I think that's the reality. So as far as an ignition sink, it's usually going to be like just a, a trigger from the PCM to a three-plus wire coil. So we could use just a plus or minus 20 would be fine. And I usually designate channel A for my ignition sink. But for the actual relative compression test, you know, we're obviously going to be using starter current to determine relative compression, and we're going to be using a high amp clamp. Now, you have a couple options. You can just do times one probe here and do the math. Generally, uh, displayed on the clamp will give you the, you know, the formula for determining the actual current in the uh, circuit based off of the voltage output of the clamp. But for our demonstration purposes, we're just going to go ahead and choose the clamp that you have and you know you may have a 600 amp clamp uh, or you may have the 2000 amp clamp it's it needs to be able to measure uh, if you're, for relative compression purposes on gasoline engines it, i would think that generally you're going to be using something that's at least a 600 amp clamp so i happen to have the 2000 amp clamp so that's what we're going to choose and i choose the 200 to 500 amp range because i'm not really doing this test a lot on diesel applications and again if i need to i can just quickly change it on the fly so that's pretty much it. I mean, that's not much different. I just turn off channels C and D. I set my trigger up again. And of course, if you guys are working on primarily on two wire coils, then you can do uh, times 20 here for a probe. Put your attenuator in if you're using a picoscope. And then choose 
uh, probably a 400 volt range, uh, plus or minus 400 volt, and you can actually get a primary signal easily. So wh whatever is easier for you and, and also whatever you're working on. So that's it as far as setting it up. And we're going to go to File, Startup Settings, Save Settings As. And I usually put it on the desktop. That way, if you need to do a relative compression test, you know you've already saved the startup settings for it. It just quickly on the desktop, you can double click on it and it will open up the software with those startup settings the way you want it. And you just name it whatever is appropriate. In this case, relative compression with sync. And you'll see it's, it's on the desktop. So we'll save it. And what we'll do here is close this out now and we'll see if it works. You can see here it is, right here. So now we are not running Pico. Pico's been closed out. We're just going to double click this and see if it works for us. So there we go. One thing I do want to mention is you know, we talked about how you don't have to have a Pico product to open existing files. So if somebody sends you a file then you could open it and use the software and you just wanted to play with it of course you can use the demo feature but when it comes to open up these specific startup settings like in our case this relative compression one we saved it won't be functional unless you have a scope actually attached via USB cable which is not a big deal obviously you're the point of this is to open up so that you can have your quick you know your settings are already set for the specific tests you want but just you know if you guys are doing this uh, following along and doing it um, just keep that in mind you, it's not going to start up like this without the scope attached. Actually, I'll go ahead and close it down. I'm going to unplug the scope and I'll show you what we have found. Just in case you do this and you start it up and you don't have your scope attached, you're like, this isn't working for me. I don't understand why this is. And that's why. You just need the scope attached uh, for it to function. And there may be another way around that. Not that it matters again, but I just wanted to kind of forewarn you and make sure you're aware of it. But if you'll notice, Without the scope module attached, you don't you have all of this blank. You know. So if just in case you do this and this is what you come up with, just keep in mind it's because your scope module isn't attached. So that's it for today, guys. Super stoked that you followed along with me. Hopefully you learned something and uh, benefit from it. And if there's any questions or concerns or if there's any tips or tricks you can add, uh, please don't hesitate to do so in the comments. Uh, somebody will get back to you if you have any questions and uh that's it. I appreciate you guys' uh, time and attention, and look for some of the upcoming videos. Like the videos, please, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Take care.